Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, a tremendous time of the year, a exciting time of the year to be one of 12 teams participating in the tournament. Uh, looking forward to competing uh, this weekend and having a chance, man, to advance. I mean, that's the goal of every team that's participating, and uh, we're looking forward to the week of preparation. Uh, you know, very, very good offense that we're going to be facing. Uh, a lot of work ahead of us, uh, but I think our guys are looking forward to the opportunity and the challenge as well. Yeah, you know, as as we're studying them, uh, John, you know, you realize that they are a different uh, group in a lot of ways than they were a year ago. So I don't know how much you can really, you know, take from what we did a season ago. It's a little bit different offense with some different personnel. Uh, so they'll present some different challenges for us all, all the way around. How much easier is it to go against them when you have a guy like Tredavious who can go with Hopkins and no one say you don't worry about it, but don't necessarily have to slide his way. Well, DeAndre is a tremendous receiver. I mean, he's an all-pro player uh, and he's capable of having one of those explosive games. And we're very fortunate to have a guy like Tre Davis uh, who can match up with a lot of receivers. I'm not sure that we'll do that this week, uh, but we have a lot of respect for what DeAndre has done in our league and you know what he's continued to do uh, even this season. So uh, we'll try to put together a good plan uh, to contain him, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's definitely a vertical threat, Will Fuller, a guy you have to pay attention to on the field. And um, he's a good player. Uh, we played against him a year ago. Uh, we'll see if he's available. If he is, you know, we'll have to have some awareness of where he is on the field. And uh, you know, he adds for sure to what they do on the, on the offensive side of the ball. So we'll see how it goes as the week goes on. Wesley, throwing out yesterday because he didn't, you know, really didn't play too much, but just how would you assess Jerry Hughes? Uh, his season, uh, you know, yeah. sacks wise, was maybe a little bit down from where he's accustomed to, but the job that he did for you this year. Yeah. I told Jerry a couple of weeks ago um, that maybe the numbers aren't there, but his impact and his influence on our defense is, it hasn't waned in, in the least bit. Uh, teams are always trying to account for Jerry, and the fact that he's played, you know, a little bit banged up this year with his wrist, and, uh, you know, he's come out there every Sunday and given us everything he has. Uh, although the numbers aren't where he'd like for him to be, he's still been an impact player for us. So I think he's had a very, very good season, uh, minus the numbers, but his impact for our defense has been exactly what we've needed. He's allowed a guy like Jordan Phillips to put up the kind of numbers he's put up. Uh, he's allowed a young guy like Ed Oliver to mature and grow because Jerry still requires a lot of attention. I mean, they still chip him. They still run screens to his side. They still try to occupy him, and that helps our defense. And then uh, Trent Murphy, you know, yesterday gets a lot of playing time, uh, especially with Shaq out, and you know, kind of comes through with a couple of sacks. Is that yeah. something that he can build on, even if the game didn't mean a lot for you guys standings wise? Can he take something, take something from that, apply it to next week? I, I think so. Uh, you know, anytime you can get production, uh, no matter who the opponent is, I mean, it's a plus, and I think that'll help with his confidence as we get ready to enter the playoffs and. Uh, he's more than capable of doing what he did yesterday throughout. And to come away with two sacks and the pressure he put on the quarterback was good for us. So I think it'll it'll boost him as we get ready to go into the playoffs. Do you think he was a guy that was maybe in need of a confidence boost? I'm not necessarily sure that would be the case, but there's nothing wrong with when you have uh, success like he had yesterday. It only improves the confidence that you do have in yourself. So uh, it's good for him, good for us as well to see that and you know something we can build on. Leslie, where in life the challenges of Obviously, mm -hmm. put up prolific passing numbers, but also I think he's second in the league over the past two seasons in, uh, in scrambling yards. Yeah, man, Marcel, he presents a lot of different problems. Uh, you know, his throwing ability, along with his escapability as well. And I mean, there are times you watch him on tape where it looks like people have him hemmed up, and somehow, some way, he gets out of it. And on the run, he makes some very accurate throws. So he presents a lot of problems to defenses and. Uh, he's, a, he's really the, the straw that stirs the drink for their offense, and you got to find a way to contain him. Uh, if not, it can be a long day. He just can hurt you in so many different ways. Leslie, especially if Levi is unable to go, how important has what Kevin's been able to do, the reps that Kevin's been getting, 
especially the second half of the year, yeah. year been for you? And also on top of that, going back to where he was a first round pick, how much do you have to kind of keep his emotions in check <laughs> a little bit this week? I'm, I'm sure the fact that you know going back to Houston, uh, that'll that'll be some added incentive for him uh, for sure. Uh, I mean, he's you know a guy who's very competitive and wants to do well. We're very fortunate that he's been playing all along, and this is not going to be something new for him. And uh, so I think he'll be in a groove throughout this week in practice. And uh, we're going to need him, you know, depending on what Levi's health situation is throughout the week. But the fact that he has been participating, has been getting in games, and been making plays for us. Uh, that should help a lot, uh, but this will be a, a big contest for a lot of reasons, and you know he'll be up to the challenge. He's a pro; he understands how to channel that energy uh, and focus it in the right place, and not get uh, you know hijacked by the emotions of going back to his former team. He'll he'll handle it the right way. You look at Deshaun's season. Are you? Go ahead, man. You look at Deshaun's season, and he's had some really good games. Yeah. One of his best against the Patriots, one of the top pass defenses in the league. Can you take something away? Yeah, you know, Matt, we'll go back and we'll look at it and we'll try to see if we can glean anything from that performance in that game. Uh, and just to take a look at how he attacked uh, their defense and see what similarities there may be. Uh, but we'll, we'll watch a ton of tape and just try to figure out some things and try to come up with a good plan to slow him down. Because as we mentioned earlier, he's more than capable of exploiting any defense. How comfortable are you with where the depth lies at corner? Specifically, Levi Cam, we saw Saran and even Taryn go on the outside yesterday Yeah, you know, this time of the year, you know, for some teams, depth is definitely an issue. Uh, but we really believe with the guys that we have, I mean, they'll step up if Levi is not able to go. I mean, our guys understand it's next man up, and so that'll give Saran an opportunity to get out there and play again. Uh, give Dean Marlowe an opportunity to get out and get some more snaps. So uh, we have some other guys that can step in and perform. Hopefully, Levi can make it, uh, but it's next man up if, if for some reason he can't go. Proud as you might be of how good this defense has played for most of the season, it's fair to say that defenses don't really make a name for themselves until the playoffs. How mm -hmm. much are you hoping, or how much do you want this unit to, to make a name for itself? Because otherwise, it's just a lost season in some ways. Is that a fair statement that defenses make their names for themselves in the playoffs? Um, you know, John, I see it more about our team than about our defense. I really hope and pray that we win this game. We put together a great performance as a team, and that's all that really matters to me. If we win and, and move on, I mean, that's the goal. Uh, if we win 39 to 38, we won the game. I'm, I'm, I'm a happy trooper because I understand in this league that it's, it's about winning. Obviously, you'd like to have personal success on defense, offense, special teams. But at the end of the day, it's about winning as a team. And that's what really matters. Really, you'd be happy with giving up 38 points? I don't think you'd be here. That's I wouldn't be happy with giving up 30, I'd be 38. But I'd be happy that we won. I'd be happy about that. As long as we win the game, that's the bottom line. Leslie, so. what's, what's different about this week? You've been in enough games as a coach and a player, Super Bowls, everything. I mean, what's different about? <laughs> playoffs versus what you just went through for 17 weeks? Well, just a, a, an entire, entirely different atmosphere uh, around the building. Uh, the fact that, you know, that everything shrinks. I mean, you're, you're the big fish in the, in the pond now. Uh, when we play this Saturday, you know, we're going to be the only game that's going to be shown. That's, that's not the case during the first 17 weeks of the season. So it's unique in that way. Uh, where all eyes are on you and people that haven't had a chance to watch you during the course of the year get a chance to finally see you know, what your team is all about. It's just uh, completely different. And then what you're playing for at this time of the year is kind of really crystallized now. Uh, you're in the tournament uh, for the world championship, and that means a lot. So the emotions and all the things you maybe dreamed about as a young kid growing up uh, to be in this position, and as we all know in this room, I mean, there are a lot of guys that play for a long time and never get to this position. So to get to the playoffs and have this opportunity it kind of reshapes things in a lot of ways and uh, really an exciting time for our players. How do you hold that message to a lot of players who have never been in this position? You know, for the young guys, uh, I, I tease uh, uh, Quan Johnson a lot of times about this fact that he comes into a team that 
you know, we've had success most of the year throughout the year, and now here we are in the playoffs. And I was teasing him early on. I said, man, you have no idea how hard it is to win these games the way we were doing. And I said, one day you'll appreciate it. And he always smiles. And uh, you try to get that message across to the young guys more so, the guys like Lorenzo and Jerry and those guys. They understand how difficult it is to get to where we are right now, to have a chance to compete for the world championship. Uh, but it's the young guys you try to bring along and make them realize that, you know, don't, don't sit around and say, well, we'll be back here next year. There are no guarantees. I mean, there has to be a sense of urgency uh, from everybody on our defense, really on our team, but on our defense in particular, because uh, that's what I can speak on. Uh, but just understanding that these opportunities don't come along every year. So let's take advantage of it. So we try to get that message across. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's important. I mean, Sean has done a great job in creating that culture where the standard is high. I mean, guys expect to win when they walk on the field. And, um, you know, when, they, when we don't, it's a major disappointment. So, you know, we work as hard as we can throughout the week to win on a Saturday or a Sunday. Uh, and so the expectations are a little bit different. But the guys embrace that, and they look forward to it. And fortunate for us, some of that hard work from the spring <laughs> through training camp through the regular season – has gotten us to this point, and that's what you worked for to get to this point. So uh, the standard has definitely changed, which is really, really good for our team and for our organization. How rare is what Saran Neal, you know, at this level, what you're asking to do, coming in as a safety, then moving to the slide, and then even potentially now going to the outside? Yeah. How rare is that in this league for, for a guy to be able to do that, especially a young player? Yeah, Matt, it, it is rare when you can find a guy. And he's a very good special teams player as well. So. Uh, you don't want to miss that part. But what he's been able to do for us throughout the season, especially early on when Taron was, was injured, uh, to be able to play the nickel position, uh, practice in the corner position like you mentioned, then yesterday having to play quite a bit of corner and really excelling at it, uh, those guys are, are rare and they're very valuable to your roster. And for us on defense, to have a guy like that where you don't feel like you lose a whole lot when he gets out there as a nickel or as a corner, they're hard to find. So he has some versatility that – Everybody kind of looks for in this league. 